Hey guys, welcome to Ansel Tech. Today we will be reviewing Cisco's latest access point, which are the 9100 series access point. Now, on the left is the 9105 access point, and on the right is the 9120 access point. This access point has the IEEE 802.11ax standard. It is also known as a Wi-Fi 6 where it supports up to 5 gigabits per second. And both of these access points has a built-in controller where it can be joined by a lightweight access point or it may use as a lightweight access point and connect it with an existing WLC. For the 9120 series access point, it consists of the multi-gigabit Ethernet port, console port, reset button, and the USB port. For the 9105 series, it consists of multi-gigabit Ethernet port, a pass-through port, USB port, console port, another pass-through port, and three additional 1 gigabit port with one PoE. Without further ado, Let's plug in and I'll show you how easily you can set up this access point. So, for this demo, I'll be using the Cisco 2960X PoE switch to connect to the access point. And I will connect it to the multi gigabit Ethernet port. The flashing green LED indicates that the access point is booting up. The solid green LED indicates that it is normal operating condition, but there is no wireless client connected. When it turns to blue, it means that at least one of the wireless client is connected. After the access point have completed the boot up, the first thing you need to do is to search for the wireless SSID called Cisco Air Provisioning and then enter the default FreeSAC key. Once connected, Open up the web browser and key in mywifi.cisco.com and now log in using the default login as shown on the page. Since this is the first time we log into the wireless controller, there will be the configuration setup wizard to assist on the basic network configuration. Remember to check on the country code of the controller, configure based on your region. For this video, we select Malaysia. Now insert your new username and password for the management access. Now, we move on to create the wireless network for this controller. The network name is your SSID name. Select your network type. This would be either employee or guest network. Select your preferred security and enter the pre-share key and then click Add. And then click Finish to save these settings. Once you've created the wireless network, you need to connect to the network that you have created and search for the SSID name and click connect. The password is the pre-share key that you have entered earlier in the setup wizard. After you have connected to the network, refresh the web interface and then log in. Enter the username and password that you have set up earlier in the setup wizard. When you have successful logged into the controller, this is how the dashboard looks like. From the left panel, click configuration, then at the wireless section. Click the access point. There you go. Now the access point has been registered in the controller. Don't forget to change the country code by clicking the country, then select Advanced tab in the Advanced section. Click the country code drop down list to change it to your preferred region.
After that, scroll down to the country tab and check again if you are getting the correct country since we are not in Korea so the country code need to be changed then click apply here i'm going to show you how does another access point join existing embedded wireless controller since we are going to show you the tftp process i'm going to install the tftp server on my pc instead of the controller Whenever the new access point connected to the existing network, it will find the embedded wireless controller and download the TFTP files which consist of the firmware. So I'm going to fast forward this process. Here it shows that the access point is downloading the firmware from the TFTP server and has joined the wireless controller.